It's your boy Skeeter Gene here coming at you from the editing room, and if you haven't already, be sure to check out my page on Locals. Here you can access exclusive, early, uncut, and uncensored Predator Catch content. If you're not familiar with the platform, it's basically just like Patreon, except I can post just about whatever I want on there, um, including some content that may be a little too hot for YouTube. You never really know what's going to happen here on YouTube with their highly strict guidelines, so I highly encourage you guys to consider becoming a Skeet supporter on Locals so that we can keep delivering you guys the content that you want to see. Now that I've got all my e-bagging out of the way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, and be sure to follow my second channel and my Twitch as well. Ah, alcohol. The key ingredient to spicing up any kind of party. There's nothing like a cold, refreshing bottle of Mike's Hard Lemonade to wash down a fresh batch of Predator pasta. Thanks to James here for bringing it on over to our sting house. I've got to admit, that shit slapped. The black cherry lemonade flavor is to die for. As soon as it hits your taste buds, it... Uh... Oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. <clears throat> Excuse me. James here showed up to our sting house to meet a 13-year-old girl with a tasty alcoholic beverage in hand. Little did he know that when he got up to use the restroom, he'd come face to face with me for a one-on-one -on -one interview. How are you? Okay. Why don't you go ahead and have a seat right over there for me, sir, please? Just right there on the bed is fine. We do have the police on standby as well, so right here for me, please. Oh. Followed by meeting the Kentwood Police Department when they arrived on scene shortly after. I'm Skeet Hansen with the Predatorial Investigation Unit, and um, we're doing an online series about adults who try to meet teens online for sex. And you've, you've just been skeeted. If there's anything else you have to say, you know, we'd, we'd love to hear it. No, I don't have anything else to say. Okay. Well, like... I guess you can, um, talk to the police now. Okay. Come on, man. Not only is James doing something illegal and just morally wrong, but he's also married with kids of his own. Something tells me that wifey isn't going to be too happy when she finds out about this. Grinning from ear to ear, James thought that he was in for a fun time on this night. Without hesitance, he handed the alcohol right over to someone that he thought was 13. Now that's a crime in itself, but before we get into that, just take a look at some of his chat log. James makes first contact with the girl in an online chat room, asking her if she's looking for some company. Right off the bat, the girl tells James that she's 13 and asks him if he's okay with it. James says, that's cool, I'm bored and horny, bad combination, lol. He then asks the girl to send an illicit photo. The girl expresses that she's not comfortable with sharing those kind of photos, but is willing to show him in person. James then offers to pick up some alcohol and come on over for a visit. James was all happy-go-lucky when he arrived, but that all went away when I stepped in to have a word with him. It was a cold winter night in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We were you know, on our phones, on the dating apps, decoying like crazy, just, you know, scouring out the area, trying to see if, you know, any of these guys out here would be okay with, you know, talking to someone who was, you know, of the age 13 or 14, for example, whatever the case may be. For the first few hours of the night, it was rather quiet, but a little too quiet, you know? Then, you know, this James guy messages the decoy account on the Kick app um, through, you know, one of these teen chat rooms that, that we're decoying on. And, you know, of course, immediately the girl, you know, tells him that she's, you know, 13 and he's okay with it. 
James has, you know, no issues with the age whatsoever. You know, James mentioned how he wanted to come on over and uh, make the girl feel better. He wanted to give her a massage, um, et cetera, et cetera. There were a few more things that he mentioned that he wanted to do that I'm not going to repeat at this time or place, but you can, you know, sort of use your imagination. As the conversation kept going, James got more and more excited, and then he offered to come on over, you know, to the Sting Motel. And he also offered to pick up an alcoholic beverage for this 13-year-old girl. So, of course, we requested Black Cherry Mike's Hard Lemonade. Now, I didn't think he was actually going to go through with it and get this beverage and bring it here, but oh boy was I wrong. So we get the text that James is in his car. He's on his way to the Sting House. And then we get the confirmation that James has acquired the Mike's Hard Lemonade. At this point, there was only a few minutes before James would actually arrive. So we fired up the cameras and, you know, really got into the mood and prepared for James to show up here. And at this point, you know, my heart's racing. We're in the bathroom. You know, this is a real adrenaline rush here, you know, waiting for this guy to show up. And a few minutes went by, and then we hear a knock at the door. And my thoughts were, oh my God, this guy's here with Mike's Hard Lemonade for this 13-year-old girl. Holy s***. Hey, how are you? He acknowledges that this girl is 13 years old and still hands the alcohol over to her for her to consume. Uh, I don't have any bottle openers. This man is an absolute menace. Either he really had to use the bathroom, or he wanted to make sure that no one else was in this motel. James is walking up to the door. I just thought, oh my God, he's going to open up this door and see four mother just staring at him. I wonder how he's going to react. How are you? Okay. Why don't you go ahead and have a seat right over there for me, sir, please. Just right there on the bed is fine. We do have the police on standby as well, so right here for me, please. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. So what's your name? I'm James. James. Yeah. James what? And what brings you here, James? Just trying to have some fun. Some fun? Nothing, nothing serious or anything. Well, I just want to hang out with What kind of fun were you trying to have? Just hang out, watch TV, watch a movie or whatever. With, uh, who are you planning on doing that with? With a 13-year-old. A 13-year-old. Yeah. And you're how old? 44. 44. Now, you told so her I mean, that... I, I know I told her at 38. You, why'd you, know. you tell her at 38? Because I feel too old. Well, I agree. You're a little too old to be hanging out with a 13-year-old girl, yeah. wouldn't you say? Yeah. I wasn't looking for anything else. So what made you decide to come here and, and meet her then? Just to hang out. Just watch TV, watch a movie. And drink some Mike's Hard Lemonade with a 13-year-old girl. Yeah. Now, why does a 13-year-old girl need to be drinking Mike's Hard Lemonade? Because figure that they would want that. But do they need that, being that no, they're 13? No. Okay, sure. and do you have an idea anytime? Okay. 
you could hand that to Chet here, I just had to document that. Appreciate it. So here you said you were 38 before and you said that you're bored and horny. I'm always horny. You can have that back. I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't you're, looking. You're always horny. So are you horny right now in this very moment? So I sort of killed your vibe, I guess you could say. No, I wasn't really. You weren't, or you weren't horny this time. Okay. At the point in time. At the point in time of when you were texting here, you were, okay. You asked her if she uh, sends nude pictures after she tells you she's 13. But she didn't, I didn't press it. So. But you asked her. I did. Imagine trying to justify soliciting nude pictures from a minor. You know, apparently this was just another day in the neighborhood for James here. So you solicited pictures from a, from a minor. Kind of, sort of. Kind of. No, not kind of, sort of. You, well, you did. I asked, but it you, doesn't mean that. It was you really... Asking... Oh, asking her... Mean. You asked her twice. You say, pick, okay? And then you say, you do... I mean, that you're soliciting. You're trying to get pictures from her. I mean, that that's that's a crime in itself. And you, you even asked her again. You say, just one picture to hold me over? To hold you over from what? Before meeting. Before meeting. Yeah. Okay. And you say, are you wanting to meet and see where it could lead to? So where were you planning on having it sort of lead to? Anything, a friendship or whatever. Anything. So this, that's about it. Where was it gonna go after, say a 13 year old girl had a couple of Mike's Hard lemonades? I, I wouldn't press anything. I'm not that way, but if you wouldn't press I, anything, yeah, I'm I mean, cool with whatever. You're cool. I'm cool enough to bring a 13 year old girl six pack. I see. Yeah, but I wasn't okay. expecting her to drink it. Well, the, well, was, that doesn't I make expect, sense, Tim. That, well, why even why bring it? Because I was gonna drink it. Because you were gonna drink it, but she asked you to bring it, yeah. and if you brought you, it for for her. Well, well, pretty much for her if she wanted. We'll be right back with your regularly scheduled dose of Predator Pasta. But first, a word from today's video sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. Size matters, and Morgan & Morgan is America's biggest injury law firm with over 800 attorneys operating nationwide. If you ever go through an injury of any kind, whether it be a slip and fall at your workplace or an unforeseen event when you're driving your vehicle, Morgan & Morgan will fight for you without even charging you up front. That's right, they won't charge you a dime unless you win the case. There's no need to feel sorry if you ever have to sue someone. Think about it like this. You're not suing the individual, you're suing their insurance company who has billions of dollars in the bank. You're entitled to the compensation that you deserve. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash SkeeterGene or dial Pound Law from your cell phone. Okay, so now you're kind of talking in circles now. So you, I don't know. were you going to drink it or was she going to drink it? I was going to drink it. Okay. And, and if she wanted it, it's on, yeah, I would have shared. But okay. nothing to get her slash drunk. Oh, so just a couple sips. Yeah. Gotcha, something light. What do you mean you weren't trying to get her drunk, James, you know? It's obvious, his intentions here are very obvious. It's clear what he wanted to do. His plan was to get this girl drunk off of these, you know, Mike's Hard Lemonades and do with her as he pleased. That's my theory. Okay, well, I mean, this is also distributing alcohol to a minor. Right. So, you know, we're two for two here, Tim. We got soliciting Jeez. nudes. I'm sorry, James. T Tim was the other predator. Sorry, James. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're two for two here. So, you know, this is, it's just not a good look. Yeah. I've never done this before. It's... You've never done it before? No. Do you know how many times I've heard that, James? But probably a thousand times, but I haven't. So. You know, what do you think the odds are that everyone would be telling the truth that says that? If it can be <laughs> truthful, yeah. Right. Should, you know. Gotcha. You see, I can come and get you and hang whatever, and you talk about how bored you are. 
I'm bored. I was gonna, you know, go to a movie. That's what I thought we were gonna be doing. So. Okay. And then you say you want to watch a movie, get something to eat, maybe have a couple of drinks, which you obviously you intended on, you know, doing here. You say that you like giving massages also. Yeah, with clothes on. With know. clothes on. Yeah, I went. Well, why, I why I'm even, not. why even tell her that? Because that's I, I like giving out massages. I do. Okay, and you would have given a, this thirteen-year-old girl a massage. Get a back massage. Just a back massage, so yeah. nothing else. No. And you expect me to believe that? That's the way I intended. That's, okay, and that's okay. So after a couple of Mike's Hard Lemonades, you were just gonna just a friendly back rub. That's it. Okay. And what else were you planning to do throughout the night? That was it. Just hang out for an hour or two. Go. Hour or two. Have a knock back a couple of Mikes and be on your way. That's what I was planning on, yeah. Okay. And um, I understand that you're married. Yes. Yes. And you're currently living with your wife. Yes. Is she home now? Yes. Now, what did you tell her you were going to do to come here? Did she ask? Uh, I was going to Uber. You were going to, oh, you were going to go, oh, you're an Uber driver? Yes. Okay. So you lied to your wife and instead of Driving for Uber, you come to deliver alcohol to a 13-year-old girl who's home alone. That's a little shady. Now, I believe James was just recently married, and it's one thing to straight up lie to your newly wedded wife, but to lie to her and go off and do this, I mean, that's just, you know, a, a whole nother thing. He tells her he's going to drive for Uber to, you know, make a couple of extra bucks on the side. But in reality, he's really going out of his way to sexually solicit a minor, a child, when he has a lovely wife right at home. I just, I, I don't understand. How do you think she would feel if she found out about this? I don't think so, not, not one bit. Not only is he deceiving his wife, but he's also planning to cheat on her here, it looks like. He was going to commit adultery. Well, I don't know if you could call it adultery, being that this is having to do with, with a child, but um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, there's some, other, some other word for it. Um, what is it? Uh, oh, pred, predaltery. There you go, predaltery. He was gonna commit predaltery, you, you know, behind his wife's back. I really um, don't think she's going to be too happy when she finds out about this. You say, yes, I can bring some drinks. Then you say you can lay back and get pampered with a massage. You're also planning on pampering her, it seems. Well, what all is um, well, included in pampering? Take her out to movie. Okay. Or going out to eat. Like okay. Bite the gotcha. And you're married to a... Well, I think she should know about this, so why don't you pull your phone out and give her a call? Let her know what you're up to. I really don't want to. Well, I understand you may not want to, Tim. Um, I'm sorry, James, but uh, I think she should know. So if you could give her a call here and put her on speaker so we can explain sort of what's going on. Oh, and Chad, did you um? Did you want to order those cookies? Yeah. Do we still? Okay. Cause I am in the mood for a dessert with some Mike's Hard Lemonade. Do you think this is right? I mean, it is, it is not do you have any kids of your own? I do have two kids. Uh, two kids of my own. How old are they? He's got kids of his own. What in the goddamn fuck? How old are they? Um. 13 and 16. 13 and 16. So the same age as the girl that you're planning to meet here tonight. Yes. Now, how would you feel if a 50-some-year-old man came to meet your 13-year-old child home alone with alcohol? I wouldn't feel good at all about it. 
So what makes it okay for you to do it? It doesn't make it right. When you factor kids into the equation, it just makes a situation like this truly heartbreaking. So why are you here then, James? Bored. Bored. You couldn't hang out at home with your wife? No, she's in bed. She's in bed. So you decided you'd come meet a 13-year-old girl instead. Why don't you just wait till she's up? The next day. Tomorrow's Sunday. Still the weekend. I mean, what do you have to say for yourself here, James? Um, <laughs> that I'm not... I feel horrible. I know that. I feel As you should, this is a... <laughs> This is a horrible thing. I know it is. So as said before, I think that your lovely wife should know about what's going on. So if you could but I please don't, I just don't, dial her out. I just don't want, I don't want to lose my wife on it. Well, James, you made the choice to walk in here. And you had many chances to turn around and not go through with this. But you still decided to come in. I know. I, I came in and I was really not wanting to do it. I was going to use the restroom and leave. And that's what I was planning on doing. And that's not what I heard when I was in the bathroom listening. It seemed like you were ready to... Like, I needed to, to go to the restroom. Well, sure, but it seemed like you were ready to, you know, get it popping with these Mike's Hard Lemonades and get to that massage that you talked about and, you know, see where it should go from there. And you even took your shoes off. Looks like you got well, a little comfortable. Was... So, obviously... Yeah, I've... I just took them off. That's a normal thing. Normal thing. Okay. Well, it seems to me like you were planning on staying here for some time. For a little bit at least. A couple hours, you said, right? So that's not just... About it, but it was... Okay. Neither or. James, I really, I think she should, she should know about this. Or would you rather the police know? You can pick your, your poison. Well, we really didn't want you to come and try to meet this 13-year-old girl, but you you did anyway. And you were planning to get for alcohol. I mean, that that's pretty serious. So I think, I think we should let her know. Are these twist-offs, do you know? Now, do, do you mind if I do you mind if I take one or is that a trick question <laughs> no 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 I'm actually kind of thirsty thankfully he's not a minor yeah I'm of age so but it's up to you you have the right to say no you brought it they're just looking kind of good from here they do look good yeah yeah purple matches your shirt yeah it does yeah either way we're getting off topic here um but yeah, um, James, if you want to, if you could please, you know, get your lovely wife on the phone, we'd love to let her know what's going on here. Now, of course, in these scenarios, you always want the alleged predator to give their wife, you know, a phone call and let them know, you know, what they're up to. But it was clear that James just wasn't going to call his wife. He just wasn't going to do it. We can skip and call the police if you want. So, is that what you'd rather do? I would uh, hang you part of the police. Um, I never said that. We typically have them on standby for these types of things. Okay. But it's you know it's completely up to up to you, James. You know what you how you want to go about it here. As more and more bullshit was spewing from James's mouth, I was beginning to get a little thirsty, and I thought, you know, what better way to quench my thirst than sipping on a delicious. Um, you know, a bottle of Mike's Hard Lemonade. 
And, uh, you know, conveniently enough, James had brought just that. So, um, you know, since I was thirsty from talking to him for so long, I had to take a sip. And on top of that, I, I had to just, I, I just had to do it for the memes, you know. Always got to do it for the memes. I would like to just to forget about this. Really well, we, we all would, but no amount of Mike's Hard Lemonade is going to make anyone forget about what happened here tonight, James. But do, do you, did you want one too? Uh, at this point in time, no, I don't. Okay, because it seemed like you were ready to crack one open when you came in. Yeah, I kind of lost the, the vibe on it. Okay. Drink. Gotcha. Gotcha. But James, I really think your you know your wife should should know about this. Since you did basically lie to her and tell her you were going to do something well, I, other than I what you're do, doing. Uh, I am planning on doing Uber. It's not like oh, okay. Oh, so this is just sort of a a, a side chore for you. Not chore, but sort of some extracurricular thing you were doing tonight. Okay. Well, James, I think you know I really think she she should know. So would you would you mind getting her on the phone? I do because I don't want to lose her. Well, James, I mean, oh, no, I don't. I don't really, I don't want to. Okay. Is there anyone else we can call and let him know? Or unless you want us to give her the information our, ourselves, we do have a way of you know contacting people. So. Uh, if you, yeah, if you wanted to, you know, come from you yourself, or if you wanted to, you know, come from us, we'll be sure to let her know. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I, I think it. I think the manly thing, and the bigger thing to do here would be to, you know, um, tell yourself. I think that'd be the more noble thing to do. Right. Try and save some sort of face something rather than her find out at a random time which may be a little more inconvenient for you and then you're not go over yeah you can still go over yeah, still sit in front of so um what will it be then james uh james um don't want to call my wife. That's so, okay. So, so, you, so you're not going to call your wife? I already said for someone else. Okay. Well, you know, I think, you know, your wife would be the most, um, you know, immediate person that should really know about this. Right. And the one that matters most. Why don't we just keep it simple and just give her a call then, James? Because I don't want to lose her. <laughs> okay. That's, okay. that's the reason why. Well, she, she's going to find out about this either way, James. I hate to break it to you. What do you mean? Uh, this is just one of those things that, you know, she'll she'll have to know about. All right. And, um, you know, we we do have a, you know, a, a, a big outreach on, you know, sort of these investigations that we do, and people end up finding out things. James, do you have anything else you have to say here? I'm really sorry for, you know, doing this. And it wasn't something that I've ever done before. And you know, something to spare the moment to kind of deal. Just feeling lonely, you know, bored. Um, okay. Don't have very many friends and just want somebody to hang out with. Okay, I just don't get why you, you know, you can't hang out with your wife. But, um, okay, James, I mean, that's pretty much all I really have to go over with you. And if that's all you have to say, then what I have to let you know is that I'm Skeet Hansen with the Predatorial Investigation Unit, and um, we're doing an online series about adults who try to meet teens online for sex. And you've, you've just been skeeted. If there's anything else you have to say, you know, we'd, we'd love to hear it. No, I don't have anything else to say. Okay. Well, well I guess you can um, talk to the police now. Okay. What's going on, man? You want to get started with that? Yeah, 
so I'll take you guys outside with me while my partner talks with him, just so I get everybody's info again. Like okay, yesterday. sure thing. So my role has flipped since yesterday. And oh, I, don't, it has. I don't remember you guys' stuff, so. Okay. okay. Here's his identification. Yeah. Uh, he gave it to us. Oh, uh, my partner will take it, though. Uh, yeah. There you go. So I have one with this one. Now, we did call Kent County PD out um, for another alleged predator just the previous night. At this point, this is just starting to become sort of a, another normal night in Grand Rapids. Yeah, there's a, they have a real predator problem out there. Uh, this guy basically, he, um, he was talking a little bit sexual, but ultimately he was trying to um, distribute alcohol um, to this 13 year old girl he was coming to meet, as you can see he did mm -hmm. uh, bring it. So oh, he did uh, not bring it? No, he brought it, it's right oh, there, okay. yeah. Yeah, so that's um, uh is it like did he send any explicit pictures of himself this time? Uh he he did not, no. So okay. we we got a little bit of sexual yeah. talk and was you there know, expectation of sex at that last time? Uh th there was there was hints of it. He did mention um doing a massage and he did ask the girl for um nude pictures. Okay. Do you have like the same yeah. layout and everything? Yeah, I have. Okay, yeah, so I'll yeah, send you a little yeah. as well. Yeah, I can do that. So we seem really redundant from yesterday, but <laughs> pretty much, I yeah. My system yeah. up with me. No, I gotcha. And what's what is it called again? The pre predatorial predatorial investigation, investigation unit. Where do you want me? Oh, uh, just I mean, you can step. In, it's cold, so you can step inside for a minute. Yeah. It's black cherry slaps. So, um, let's, uh, let's go to my car real quick. We're going to have a conversation. Okay. DC. And who else was involved? Um, this young lady here. They were just here for the show, basically. They, okay. they didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, she was the live decoy live this decoy. time, yes. Okay. All right. Grand Rapids, Chris Hansen. Michigan's Chris Hansen. Uh, that's, that's, what they, that's what they call me. We're kind of the second <laughs> coming of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah something like that. Um, security, did you, anything else you can add? No. No? No. Uh, basically everything that you heard from them is everything that, that happened on my side. Do you have that binder? Did you show my partner? Do you have it with you today? Um, the binder, we didn't have his printed out. No? I okay. just got his uh, chats just All a few hours ago. I have them on my phone. I can, um, if you send me an email, I can Yeah, so um, to you. My, uh, my partner has his work phone, but we're going to send the link. I just want to make sure I have it correct. Okay, link. cool. Um, so my partner wants to interview him with our dash cam. I think that's why he took him down there. Okay. Um, so he's interviewing him in his car. I'll go down there and check on him. Uh, I'll make sure that he sends you that link because we're going to want all that documentation. Okay. Um, what else? Can you give me some... Do you have your phone with you? Can you show mm -hmm. me? Or yeah, yeah, I can show you. Tell me a yeah. little bit about what the conversations yeah. entailed. The detective bureau is going to want to know yeah, absolutely. some specifics like we were able to do yesterday. So he sent a face picture. Yeah, initially, yep. But like you told me, there was no, uh, no, no, no explicit pictures. No, explicit, no explicit pictures. Okay. No. Um, he does say he's thirty-eight. He says he's bored and horny. Um, we say here thirteen female Grand Rapids, and then immediately he asks for um, nude, nude pictures. Nudes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm thirty-eight. Said, I'm horny. And then she asks her for nudes if she does them. Um, yeah, she says it again, 13 female, Queen Rapids. She says just one to hold me over, so asking again. Um, asking what things could lead to. Um, he talks about coming over and hanging out. Then he says maybe watch a movie, get some, uh, get a couple of drinks, whatever you want to do. And then it says he likes giving massages also. Okay, so talks about massages. Yep. Initially asked what could this lead to if we hang out. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. And he says he can bring drinks and he wants her to lay back and get pampered with a 
massage, and then that's just some of his his information. Okay, so yeah. I got the gist of it. He's yeah, but I think that's the bigger, the big thing. That's the yeah. He's trying to give her. So up. we'll 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 throw that in there for the uh, detectives and the prosecutors to look at in terms okay. of uh, what kind of charges they want to review for it. Okay, it's not as clear cut when it comes to the criminal sexual conduct stuff. Yeah, but. It's there, so yeah. we're gonna we're still gonna pursue charges, or we're going to ask for charges to still be reviewed on that. Okay. So I'll go talk cool. with him. Um, I'll be back up with a. Do you guys want a report number or anything like that? Yeah, we could report. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah. Give me a second here. At this point, it's probably gonna be the same as yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Where we're gonna let him go. Yeah. Did you get everything right. you needed from him as far as your questions and stuff you wanted to ask him? But I'm gonna go down there and check on him and. We'll forward this like we did yesterday. Okay. Appreciate it. Appreciate what was your name? Uh, Couch is my last name. Appreciate it, sir. You guys take Thank care. Thank you so much. Yep. Have a good one. So James is taken out of the room for questioning from, you know, the Kent County PD. And that's pretty much the last that we hear of him. You know, we did, of course, submit all of our findings over to them in email form. And it's going to be, you know, an ongoing investigation. So we'll just have to wait around and see what happens. And James's wife may have not known of his doings on that night, but we did end up getting in contact with her on another day. And she now currently knows of his doings on this night at our Sting Motel. I can't go into too much detail on it, but she's not happy about it and she wants him out. So hopefully she's, you know, getting that taken care of. We know that there are many, many other alleged predators out there, just like James, and James was just one in the bunch, really. And if any of the others happen to fall into our investigation, you know, they'll be discovered and they will get skeeted, just as James did on this night. <laughs>